Welcome to the Hydro Farm. Let me tell you a little story. My name's Charlie. I work as a firefighter paramedic. I've been doing so for about 10 years as a firefighter, and about 15 years as a paramedic. I got a whole bunch of different types of training, uh, anywhere from hazmat. I also did canine search and rescue. I also work as a tactical medic for the SWAT team. Good number of years ago, I met the love of my life, and she was crazy enough to marry me. Realizing we have similar passions, she went to paramedic school. She learned how to save lives and spent a shift out on the ambulance. She was moving someone over when she felt a pop in her wrist. She ended up with a plate and seven screws in her arm, and that was that. She couldn't do the job anymore. But not to worry. Soon after this, the most amazing thing happened to us. Meet Elena. This adorable new chapter in our lives was the best thing that could have ever happened to us. But unfortunately, nowhere on her birth certificate did it say life was going to be fair. She was born at Johns Hopkins Hospital with a super rare congenital problem called a bronchopulmonary sequestration with a congenital cystic adenoid malformation. This was the first time we got to see her and the only chance for about 14 hours. Basically, she was born with an improperly formed lung that would require surgery. To make matters worse, she decided she wanted to come six weeks early. But she thrived and did wonderfully with the help of the NICU staff. She was so tiny when she came home. A year later, we returned to the hospital so that she can get part of her lung removed. This was concerning because it had attached itself to the aorta, which of course is really not good. But look at her now. What parent could wish for anything more than a healthy, active young lady like this? You would never know the challenges she had in her early years, but let's back this story up. Three years ago, I got injured at work. In this line of work, back injuries are common. Here, Elena is my physical therapy buddy. Having a lot of time on my hands, I got to spend all sorts of time with her. She loved strawberries, but I started to wonder where they came from in the middle of November. So I started to research it, and man, it did not like what I found. Her beloved strawberries were traveling thousands of miles, packed in trucks with substandard handling practices. Already, who knows how old. Of course, I wanted the best for her, but I couldn't stop giving her what she wanted. This kid loved strawberries so much, she even learned how to walk chasing down that delicious fruit. To this day, she would still choose strawberries over chocolate, so I knew I had to do something. During the double blizzard, I went out and dug up a strawberry plant. I brought it in, I transplanted it into clay pellets, and I learned how to grow it hydroponically. This experiment quickly turned into a crazy soilless winter project. I tricked these June-bearing strawberry plants into producing January fruit. I thought my wife would kill me since it started to take over the entire room in our house. But as fate would have it, she came to me during the government shutdowns concerned for her government contractor job. We realized that the only way she would be happy is to go into business for herself. We milled around with a number of ideas, but somehow we came back to this. She wanted to know if it was possible to go big on what we were doing. I had a ton of time to mindlessly run on a treadmill in physical therapy, so I dreamed this design up. This would be on a small plot of land, run completely off-grid, and be sustainable. So we pulled the trigger and formed the hydro farm. We got to work right away on a small plot of farm land. We worked tirelessly trying to figure out how to make it work. We chose a few growing techniques such as NFT or nutrient film technique. And we were off to the races and we were growing some crazy stuff. The system was built around space management and efficiency. We would grow lettuce in little cubes and float them on repurposed styrofoam. Roots would form and dangle in nutrient-rich water rather than soil and essentially form a lettuce conveyor belt. We started harvesting and looking for a customer base. People were amazed at the freshness and color, and it still had its roots attached. It was so fresh that we would leave its roots attached and try to see how long it would stay in the fridge. In this picture, a head of bib lettuce was still crunchy after 36 days. We kept this crunchy for eight weeks until I wanted to stop looking at it in my snack drawer and eventually made burgers. We started cloning herbs from clippings. 
something really simple to do in a hydroponic system. And man did it take off. On the left is African blue basil, a sterile hybrid that we've been offering as an alternative to standard basil. On the right is the most aromatic and strong tasting mint you will ever have tried. We started to send samples to the local restaurants, especially places that we like to eat. I wasn't the best salesman, but luckily due to the color and freshness of the products, it practically sold itself. We began to grow things like kale, and of course it grew quick and giant in our system. We tried our hand at heirloom tomatoes and varieties not commonly available. We thought that we would see if the public could use a little fresh in their lives. So we tried our idea at the Harford Farm Fair. We were the only ones to bring a farm to the farm fair. We created a portable system where people could walk up and pick their own herbs and sample fresh lettuces. We started to get some attention from both the locals and the Harford County Government Agricultural Committees. In a really short time, this thing started to take off, but of course, as luck would have it, the farm sold, and the new owners had a different vision for where our greenhouse was sitting, so we decided it was time to leave. We were able to move our produce overnight to a different location. Get this, zero transplant shock. We didn't lose a single plant or seedling. We went back to the drawing boards and started to work on a new location. Here, we used a plot that for the most part is not usable for crops. We got a little grant money for, that went a long way for us. Here, our nutrient management specialist helped get our system back up and running, and we were able to purchase some commercially made rafts and drip irrigation systems. It made life so much easier, efficient and manageable. Since we lived quite a distance away, we researched how to make the whole farm run off grid. We put sensors all over the place so that if there was a problem, our greenhouse would call or email us. We could look in with cameras and help our new employees troubleshoot ideas remotely. We even installed solar power LEDs at their request so that they could work at night and as an escape from their kids and husbands. This place began to get a lot of attention. People kept calling to get tours of the place and to see this new thing that came out of nowhere. We started to plant thousands of heads of lettuce and we were off to the races again. Our improved conveyor belt of lettuce would produce over 2,500 heads of lettuce per pond per cycle. We even used the ponds to start five varieties of pepper plants. We would transplant them into these Beto buckets that worked off drip irrigation. The plants exploded since they used minimal effort to get the water and nutrients. It produced the spiciest, most flavorful jalapenos I could have imagined. All on a recirculating system that uses less than 10% of the water of traditional farming. My daughter even loved to pick the tomatoes. At least until she realized they were not as good as strawberries. We decided to start planning expansion of our ponds to outdoor open air ponds. This would give us the ability to grow over 20,000 heads of lettuce per cycle, tons of fresh herbs, and 70 to 100 pounds of vine crop fruit like eggplant per week. So we gathered up whatever savings we had left and got started. But as luck would have it, where we were situated was one of the highest points in Harford County. 90 mile an hour winds came through and destroyed one of our greenhouses. It crushed thousands of dollars of growing equipment and materials, but we didn't let this stop us. So we began to look at other ways to quickly raise money. We began to grow microgreens. This product is widely used in fine dining and as garnish and flavor. However, it comes packaged in tiny clamshells and generally is garbage after a few days. Here, we provide the restaurants a still growing alternative where they can harvest what they need as they need it. We began to grow it in temperature controlled rooms so that we could provide this year round. We even sold $3,000 worth of microgreens for one giant event hosted at APG's Top of the Bay. The meals that we found our products in were awesome. 
Here is hydroponically grown eggplant with toasted mint leaves. And on the right, someone even tried to showcase a salad with its roots still on. And yes, even the roots have an interesting taste. Chefs began to take a product that was once only a garnish and began to use it as main ingredients in salads. Nothing tastes better than a fresh sunflower microgreen salad. Microgreens are also said to be up to 30 times as nutritious as its adult counterpart. We started getting contacted by Hartford County Public Schools. We took on some high school students and research projects and gave some presentations to the entire fifth grade classes and even built a display for Hartford Glen. Realizing that we were building this too slowly with little to no starting capital, we are back to the drawing boards. We would like to build a wind rated structure that allows us to control the environment better. This would allow for a more diverse growing technique such as aquaponics, the process of using farm raised tilapia to provide nutrients for the plants. The nitrates from the fish waste would circulate to the lettuce ponds where the plants would take it up and provide fresh clean water for the fish. We would have new commercially made NFT systems where efficiency is at its peak. Insect management techniques would allow for better heirloom varieties with minimal waste. We would be able to introduce beneficial bugs to control pests rather than use chemicals. This would also be a scalable and easily expandable operation. Each bay would serve its own purpose, including a space for events and educational opportunities. This is going to be the future of farming. We need to be able to show our children that with a little imagination, anything is possible. Let's show our kids where our food comes from and that we don't always need to do things the way our grandfathers did it. Why can't we put fresh in our grocery stores? Why can't we pick our own produce locally rather than have it shipped 2,000 miles? For all those non-believers, we challenged it. This is a trial run in our local shop right. Why can't we get vine ripened tomatoes right off the vine? Why are there only six varieties of tomatoes available when there are thousands? Fresh ideas are coming and people want to know where their food comes from and how to get it closer, fresher, without any chemical pesticides. Who knows where the future of farming will go? We like to get our ideas from the imagination of fifth graders because they believe in, couldn't we do this instead of that's not possible. This was an idea we grew from a seed planted in necessity. We realized the problem and we wanted to solve it. We took a fresh view on agriculture from a completely different background with completely different ideas. We are not farmers from a long line of farmers. We are regular blue collar people just trying to provide for our families and friends. Let's figure out how we can move forward and ask the questions and know where our food comes from. Let's start growing.